Do you know that it took me several weeks to settle on which offer to accept? And during my visa interview, the consular asked me why I declined the offer from Harvard. Since then, several people have wondered why I declined an offer from Harvard and settled for Johns Hopkins. So today, I will address one of the most challenging decision-making stages in my graduate school journey and perhaps convince you why I chose Hopkins over Harvard. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Dr. Banda Khalifa. I'm a physician and a current PhD student at the number one school of public health, the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I also received the prestigious MPH and MPA SOMA Scholar Scholarship at Hopkins. I've mentored and guided several students on their journey to graduate school. On this channel, I help provide guidance and strategies to break barriers in your academic and personal developmental journey. So if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe, like, share, so that others will benefit. Let's dive straight in. Five variables we are going to look at are one, the brand, or the reputation or the quality of the program. Two, the networking potential. Three, faculty and research opportunities. Four, job prospects after school. And five, the quality of the offer, which may eventually be a deal breaker. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's dive in. I spent more than a month researching and discussing with my wife, my family, my friends, which option to take. Don't get me wrong, having an offer from Johns Hopkins and Harvard at the same time and having to choose between these schools is even a good problem to have, right? Let's look at the brand or the reputation or the quality of the program. See, so the quality of the program is one of the most critical decision-making metrics. Don't let anyone deceive you that the reputation of the school or the brand of the school doesn't matter. Hiring managers or people will often ask you which school you attended before inquiring about the program you did. According to the US World News and Reports, which uses over 13 indicators to rate schools' global and regional reputations, Harvard consistently ranks in the top two on the global school rankings in overall reputation. So global, re global reputation certainly goes to Harvard. There is no doubt about that. However, Johns Hopkins reigns in the field of interest, which is public health. See, so the Johns Hopkins University is the first degree granting and the largest school of public health in the world and has been consistently ranked number one by the US News and World Report for more than 40 years. Harvard shares the second spot with the University of North Carolina. So in this category, Johns Hopkins has a slight edge. Networking potential. As the oldest school of public health, the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School Alumni Network is one of the program's most valuable assets. It currently has more than 2,600 students from over 95 countries with nearly 27,000 alums and more than 1,500 faculty members. There are chances that your classmates will be the next health minister or president of health-related organizations. When it comes to networking potential, you can't go wrong with Harvard University. Harvard also can boast of incredible alumni network in various fields, whether it's business, medicine, or public health, or law, Harvard can boast of these incredible alumni network opportunities. So in this category, I'll certainly say it is a tie. Job prospects. See, the reason for graduate school is most likely to enhance your market value and the expanse alumni network and the proximity to the iconic Johns Hopkins Medical Institute enhances your job prospects 
and almost every graduate gets a job offer a year after graduation. Hopkins MPH and Harvard MPH are perhaps the same in this category. Research opportunities and impact of faculty in the field of public health. Johns Hopkins University, be the oldest school of public health, has over 80 centers and institutes within the school. It has received the highest research funding for several years and works in more than 100 countries. Our journey began long before COVID-19. Life-saving answers originated here over a century ago, opening our doors just days before the outbreak of the Spanish flu in 1918. We introduced the fields of biostatistics and epidemiology. We guided the first clinical trials of penicillin, creating a gold standard for drug development. Our researchers helped defeat polio and are continuing the fight against malaria. We were the first to show that smoking cuts lives short, and our testimony helped break up big tobacco. According to the recent Forbes report, Johns Hopkins tops the list of leading universities for the National Institute of Health funding in 2021, receiving nearly $30 million more than Harvard. And from the National Science Foundation, Johns Hopkins University has consistently ranked as the number one school for research and development expenditure. As a student, there are often numerous opportunities for you to engage in research on any of the campuses, including the iconic Medical Institute. So in this category, I would say Johns Hopkins wins. So let's look at the quality of the offer. Like it or not, scholarship offers are an essential decision-making variable to consider, especially for international students. Most international students cannot afford the high tuition and living expenses in a typical Ivy League or a top-ranked institution. If you look at Harvard, for instance, the total cost of attendance for a full-time MPH program at Harvard is almost $100,000. This includes nearly $67,000 in tuition and $25,000 in living expenses. There was no way I was going to be able to afford this. Fortunately, Harvard's offer came with a partial scholarship covering almost 50% of the tuition costs. This would still leave me with about $70,000 to cover. Another important consideration is that Johns Hopkins offered me a dual degree program, which is a Master of Public Health and Master of Business Administration. So that graduates with MPH and MBA are often uniquely positioned to work in a dynamic world of public health and also build a network that includes professionals spanning different industries and sectors. The deal breaker for me was the offer of a SOMA Scholars Scholarship or the SOMA Scholars Program. The Johns Hopkins SOMA Scholars Program is one of the best, if not the best in terms of scholarships and professional developments. So the SOMA Scholars Program aims to develop a network of public health leaders who make a difference in the world. The program provides full tuition for, for the dual degree program, costing about $137,000, provides health insurance and a stipend. In addition, you also get to participate in enrichment activities aimed at developing personal skills fostering collaboration and building a network of contacts you can draw throughout your career. Apart from the financial incentives during my time, I had the opportunity to take a trip to New York to go and see Michael Bloomberg, who's a former mayor of New York. We had the opportunity to have, to have lunch with a former dean of SOMA. We networked with alumni of the SOMA Scholars Program. We had lunch with Dean of the School of Public Health and many others. Another critical decision-making point, which is perhaps very important, is the student diversity. And the student population had almost 50% being international students. There is no way you can go wrong with any of these schools. I personally have mentored students who got into all these schools 
some settle with Harvard, others settle with Johns Hopkins. So it depends on your personal preference and what variables you think are very important to you. So I hope that if you were in my shoes, you would do exactly what I did. In the comment section, let me know if you would have done something differently if, if you were in my shoes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.